I'm continuing to explore gears, transmissions, and differentials, and I want to show you what I have so far in working on a planetary gear. And I have had some issues getting this to work properly, particularly the overdrive configuration. But in this video, I want to show you how I am setting up a planetary gear assembly. Let's start off by creating a brand new assembly. I'll go to File New and change it to Assembly. And for the name, I'm going to call it Intergalactic. Little Beastie Boys reference there. Let's click the OK button. And I've got my assembly started. Let's turn on the datum plane display and the axis display. I need to create an assembly level axis that's going to be used for a number of my pin connections. To create the axis, I will click on the command in the ribbon. And I'm going to create it at the intersections of the datum planes ASM right and ASM top. That's good. Let's click the properties tab to rename it. I'll call this rotation. Then click the OK button. Now I am ready to bring in my various different components. Let's click the assemble button. And the first one that I will bring in, let's grab the internal spur, spur gear and this one has a diameter of 80 and so I'm just going to leave it right here on the screen for now let's choose the user defined drop down list to change this to a pin connection and for lining up the axes I'm going to pick the datum axis I created at the assembly level just now and the center axis for the spur gear to eliminate translation I will select ASM front and the datum plane called front. The connection definition is complete. Let's hit the check mark in order to place that in the model. That's good. Now let's put in our sun gear. I will click the assemble button. And my sun gear is going to be my spur gear with the diameter of 20. Let's click the open button. And once again, I'm going to use a pin connection change to pin and again use the center axis of this component and I want to make sure that I am getting the rotation axis that I created let's also select ASM front and the datum plane called front from here that's good we will hit the check mark again my screen right now is already starting to get kind of cluttered with the various different datums let me go to some of these components here and hide their default datums. Cleaning up as I'm going along. Next, I'm going to put in my carrier. Let me open up the carrier to show it to you for a second. For designing this carrier, I do have these cuts over on the back end, and that's just so that later on when I'm doing the animation, you can see how this is spinning for some of the different reduction configurations. Also, this has three posts. I am using three planet gears in this one. And be aware that there are a number of different conditions you need to satisfy when you are setting up a planetary gear. Initially, I assumed that if I wanted to have three gears, I would just automatically space them evenly about 120 degrees from each other. But it turns out that there's a formula that you have to use. And in this particular case, when I took a look at the formula, I just want to go to my front view. I have this post over here, which is at zero degrees, but these two are actually at 108 degrees apart from each other. And so they're 126 degrees apart from that one. So those conditions are necessary in order to get proper meshing. And the formulas are available online for figuring out what angles you want things to be placed at. For assembling the carrier, let me click on the assemble button and grab the carrier component. And for this one, again, we are going to do a pin connection. All these are allowed to rotate. And just to make sure that I'm grabbing the rotation axis, I'll just pick it out of the model tree. And in this one, let me turn off the display of the 3D dragger, just because sometimes it gets in the way. And we'll select the main axis. 
then for eliminating our translation let's again select this surface and ASM front so it's located in the right place that's good let's hit the check mark and actually before I even hit the check mark I'm going to add in a regeneration value a lot of times I don't like to use regeneration values but in this particular case it will be useful just to make sure that whenever I'm starting off everything the gears will be meshing with each other so let's select ASM right and then from the component let me expand the model tree and choose right from over there current position is zero degrees I'm just going to check this box to enable that as a regeneration value and for the same reasons it'll also help if I go back and do the same things for the gears I've already placed I can click on them and then use edit definition and then from the placement tab we can click on rotation axis and I'm just going to use the datum plane right from the assembly and right from the component and set that as my regeneration value hit the check mark in order to place it also I'm working on this one I can see that the mirror plane is visible datum planes just clutter up the screen pretty quickly as you are working and again we will go to the spur gear let's first hide that mirror plane and edit definition in order to specify our zero references and there's no particular reason why I'm using the datum planes called right I'm just choosing that I could have used the datum planes called top as well so that is good for those three components I'm going to turn off my axis and plane display because now I'm going to put in my different spur gears and I've got the necessary references from geometry to use in order to place them and I just want to make sure okay that is the front post I'm just kind of keeping track of which uh, where I have the 126 degree angle and where I have the 108 degree angle so now let's put in our planet gears and those are the ones with a diameter of 30 and place it over here let's go to the drop down list and again choose a pin connection and I will choose this surface and this surface and then to eliminate translation this surface and I'm going to query select by tapping the right mouse button to get that surface over there connection definition is complete but again I'm going to use some regeneration val or excuse me uh, specify some references and let's use right and then for the assembly reference I am going to use from the carrier the datum plane called right and right now they're at zero degrees and I like that because I, I can see right now just looking at them they mesh and line up by the way I am continuing on with working on the actual design of the gears I don't think I've got the addendum and dedendum values and also the root shapes exactly the way that I want them to be for designing them but again there I have my first spur gear in here let's repeat that process assemble grab the same spur gear and right now it's using a temporary interface that's fine let's use this and then let's use this uh, that's because I have a config option turned on called create temp interfaces so the first time I assemble a component in my session it is going to use those same different uh, references and for aligning this one let's use the datum plane called right and the datum plane called right from the carrier right now it's got a zero degree angle oops accidentally hit the middle mouse button let me go to my front view because I need to adjust it so that the gear teeth are placed in correctly let's edit definition placement tab rotation axis and I'm just gonna eyeball it something that looks nice yeah that's relatively good and using a value of six degrees let me use this button to set that as the regeneration value and enable a regeneration value and now one last time to bring in the final planet gear 
And as I'm bringing in that planet gear, I mentioned that you have the conditions for meshing depending on whether you have uh, an even or an odd number of planets. It's much easier if you have an even number of planets. But in my particular situation, I wanted to do one with an uneven number. And for that reason, I have that odd spacing. Uh, be aware that there is another condition whereby the diameter of your sun gear plus two times the diameter of your planet gears is the diameter of your internal gear. So again, that's just another formula that you can get online or from various different resources. It's just so that you can size everything properly. All right, for aligning, let's use right from the carrier and datum plane right from the component that I'm placing. Let's go to the front view. Again, I'm just going to eyeball it. There we go. That looks pretty good. Let's use that as the regeneration value and hit the check mark. So in that way, I have my planetary gear assembled with my various different pin connections for all of them. Now I'm going to go over to mechanism mode and put in the necessary different gear connections. So I can go to applications and then mechanism. This is the icon for creating a gear connection. And before I actually create the gears, I'm going to expand connections in here and then joints. And so here are my various different connections that are in here. And I'm just going to take a look. See here we have connection one and I just want to figure out. Okay, so connection one, that's for this. Here I have another connection one and that is going to be for that spinning object. Okay, and that one, connection two is the carrier. And then we have connection three which is for the different planets in here. So now let's take a look at creating some gear pairs. We can click gear over here. I'm going to rename this just to keep track of all of them. The first one I'm going to do is going to be from the sun to planet one. And now to pick the motion axis, here we have the connection axis. I'm just going to query select, see what. Okay, that is connection two. All right, let me try that one there. And let's go to gear two over here and select the motion axis for over here. Actually, let me go back to gear one. I just want to take a look in here as we are creating it. Uh, let's see, I forgot to put in the diameter here. Let's plug in that value. Let's go to gear two and we're going to pick this one over here. And right now I think the arrows are pointing in the opposite direction. So I'm going to flip this to make sure that the rotation goes in the right direction. And let's now go to specify this diameter. And from the properties tab, we're automatically calculating the gear ratio from the pitch circle diameters. So let's click the OK button. And here we have the gears in here. I just want to make sure for the different objects that I am getting the right things here. Nope. OK, looks like this one. I accidentally selected the axis for the internal gear, uh, which is kind of confusing. It kind of stinks here that they have the same names over here. I actually want to make sure, let's see, body two is the one that I want for the gear. So you have to be a little careful with this. Let me make sure for gear two. Yep, that looks good. Let's edit definition and use the pick icon. And let me see if I pick that one. Nope, same thing. Let's put over here. Let's query select to get the other one. There, now we have body two uh, listed in there as the pinion. So again, it's just something you have to take care of. One thing I wish that they had is the ability to rename some of the different connections. If I go and click on the connection over here, you're allowed to zoom to the selected object, but you can't rename it. So it's going to be a little tricky for me to do this. Let me just make sure that I'm using body two uh, as the connection as I create them. All right, let's repeat the process. Create another gear pair and for the motion axis. 
let me try query selecting to this one there we go there's body two that is good let's go to gear two and we'll use this one over here and forgot to plug in the values for the diameters by the way this is I know a ginormous planetary gear because uh, I started making these in inches so this is good let's click let's change the name so this is Sun to Planet 2 and click the OK button so there we have our second gear pair and let's create the other one for the Sun again I'm going to query select there we go we're getting body 2 over there and turn our diameter and then select the other planet let's hit the flip button so it's going in the right direction not sure if I flipped the previous one so I can go back and check plug in the value over here and click OK alright just to verify if I have it going in the right direction if I don't have it going in the right direction then I'm when I test and do an analysis I would see oh wait one thing is spinning in the wrong direction so it's very important to check as you are doing the analyses that you're getting the correct motion that you want let's create our gear pairs and this one is going to go from the planets to the internal ring and let's choose internal planet one and for the motion axis let's select this one over here so body one is the internal that's good. Oh, that's also highlighting on the screen let's plug in the value here this is going to be a value of 80 and then for gear 2 let's choose planet 1 let's flip the direction and this is a diameter of 30 let's click OK and then I'm just gonna do that real quickly for the last two let's do internal planet two and the motion axis this one here diameter gear two there we go flip it and plug in the values and click OK and our last one same as before flip it and now let's plug in our diameter and click the OK button so in that way now I have my planetary gear set up with the different pin connections and the gear pair connections uh, one last thing let's regenerate just so that I can get everything in my start position let's go to the drag button create a snapshot and I'm going to rename this to start so I can use it to quickly go back to everything placed in the right location and then start doing some analyses and when you're doing a planetary gear if any two of the moving objects whether it's the Sun or the carrier or the internal ring are fixed you're going to get essentially direct drive if you have one of the objects fixed that's going to determine what kind of motion that you're getting whether it's going to be a reduction reverse reduction or overdrive and we'll take a look at setting up those analyses and how to fix some of the different connections in the next video I hope you enjoyed this video for more information please visit www creolewindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.